fertilization we'll see spermatogenesis and oogenesis later so what is fertilization and the female pronucleus fuses with the male pronucleus as a result of fertilization the ovum completes its second meiotic division and the second polar body is formed okay here this is uterus with ovary on both sides when sperm enters the female reproductive organ it meets the ova at ampule of the fallopian tube so this is the site of fertilization so out of a few hundred capacitated sperms which surrounds the ovum only one pierces the zona pellucida and enters the ovum as a result of fertilization the diploid chromosome number is restored coming to the next step cleavage so the male pronucleus and female pronucleus with only haploid chromosome that is 23 duplicates itself to form diploid chromosome number which is 46 and the cells undergo series of divisions two cell becomes three then becomes four five cell this process of subdivision of the ovum into smaller cells is called cleavage as cleavage proceeds the ovum comes to have 16 cells which looks like a mulberry and this stage is called morula so here is the morula stage which is called blastomere and when you take a cut section across the morula we can see a layer of outer cells outer cell moss and few inner cells called inner cell moss and this outer cell moss is called trophoblast and inner cell moss is embryo blast so the cells of the trophoblast helps to provide nutrition to the inner cell mass which is embryo the zona pellucida layer disappears and the outer cell moss layer is called trophoblast inner cell moss layer is embryoblast so this inner cell moss comes to attach to one side of the trophoblast and that pole is called embryonic pole and the opposite side pole is ab embryonic pole so this is blastocyst with two poles formation of amniotic cavity and yolk sac a space appears between the trophoblast and the upper layer of embryonic cells those are called epiblast and the roof of this amniotic cavity is lined by amniogenic cells these cells are derived from the trophoblast whereas the floor of the cavity is lined by the epiblast cells now some cells of the inner mass differentiates and becomes flattened the upper layer is epiblast which are columnar cells and the lower flattened differentiated cells spreads itself to line the inside of blastocystic cavity and this lining of flattened cells is called husus membrane 
this forms a cavity called primary yolk sac here you can see both the cavities amniotic and yolk sac cavity okay now let's move on to bilaminar germ disc so we have already seen the upper layer of inner mass cells or columnar cells and these cells are called as epiblast and the lower cells these are hypoblast This is bilaminar germ disc. Bilaminar meaning two layers. Now let's see how this bilaminar becomes trilaminar. Let's focus only on the epiblast and the hypoblast cells. You can see the lower lining of cells gets differentiated. That is, the cuboidal cells becomes columnar. What is this differentiated cells called as? So this is procordal plate. This procordal plate is very important because that determines the central axis of the embryo and also it enables us to distinguish the head and tail ends. the procordal plate always present in the head end so the opposite end will be the tail and what happens the upper layer of cells that is epiblast cells proliferates to form primitive streak the cells of primitive streak pushes itself between the two layers that is epiblast and hypoblast and these cells form the intervening mesoderm you can see these primitive streak cells also replaces the lower hypoblast cells which becomes endoderm that is primitive streak gives rise to both mesoderm and endoderm so this uh, cells of primitive streak they spread between the two layers epiblast and hypoblast but they do not intervene at the place of procordal plate so in that region ectoderm is in direct contact with the endoderm there is no intervening mesoderm as there is no mesoderm in the region of procordal plate this region becomes relatively thin and forms a membrane called buccopharyngeal membrane and these left out epiblast cells becomes ectoderm so the three layers ectoderm from the epiblast mesoderm and endoderm from the primitive streak so this is the embryonic disc showing the primitive streak the primitive streak gradually elongates along the central axis so the embryonic disc also elongates and becomes pear shaped so here this is the direction the cells of primitive streak pushes themselves between the layer of ectoderm and endoderm by now you must have realized that the cells of inner cell walls have the potential to differentiate into three different germ layers ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm so they give rise to all the tissues and organs of the body so these cells are called as stem cells and if these cells are exposed to certain specific growth factors 
these stem cells can form various types of adult cells example neuron cells muscle cells blood cells cartilage cells and hence they are said to be pluripotent cells okay there is progressive increase in the size of embryonic disc so with this further enlargement the embryonic disc becomes folded on itself at the head end and the tail ends just before the formation of head and tail folds the structures in the embryonic disc from cranial to caudal side or septum transversum pericardial cavity and the heart procaudal plate then comes the neural plate primitive streak then the cloacal membrane so now with the formation of head fold the septum transversum which was the most cranial structure in the embryonic disc now lies caudal to the heart later this develops into diaphragm and liver so this pericardial cavity with the heart it comes to lie to the ventral side of the embryo and the region of the procaudal plate now forms the buccopharyngeal membrane or oral membrane and this is definitive yolk sac also called umbilical vesicle at this stage the head is represented by the bulging caused by the developing brain while the pericardium may be considered as occupying the future thorax and these two are separated by stomatodium which is future mouth so it is apparent that the neck is not at present now the neck is formed by the elongation of the region between the stomatodium and the pericardium may be also due to by the descent of developing heart however the main reason is because of the appearance of series of mesodermal thickenings in the wall of cranial most part of the forehead and that is your bra branchial arches or pharyngeal arches the endoderm is separated from the surface ectoderm by layer of mesoderm and this mesoderm comes to be arranged in the form of six bars in the side wall of the forehead now you can see at the region of buccopharyngeal membrane there is no mesoderm intervening and this membrane disappears enabling the forehead to communicate exteriorly so the mesoderm forms arches inner side endoderm forms pouches which gives rise to many important organs and the surface ectoderm this is in the region of neck which is marked on the outside by a series of clefts or grooves called as ectodermal clefts in the first cleft passes to form or external acoustic meatus whereas the other clefts are obliterated let us talk about pharyngeal apparatus in detail in the next video thank you